everyone and welcome to another session of Franchising with FASA. I'm Romani Thresher and I'm delighted to have joining me today is the team from Inani. Inani is a non-profit incubator accelerator. Inani is all about education, skills development and job creation, bringing together business and education. Today I'll be chatting with Ornika Mukabuli, who is involved in the training aspect of, in, of the Inani Initiative, uh, Tony Delmedo, who covers BBBEE, and Nico Wurter, who is the founder of the Inani Nonprofit Incubator Accelerator. So these guys, all of them, will be telling us or sharing with us who and what this is all about, how FASA and Inani have been working together to create jobs, upskill people into the franchising sector. How does this work? What is it all about? Let's go and find out. So hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Hello, so we're going to start, start off with uh, chatting with Nico and asking Nico, what is the Inani Incubator Celebrator all about? Thank you, Romney. Thank you for having us. It's been a few years coming, um, so it's great to be, to be interviewed like this. Look, Inani started as a charitable organization just over 20 years ago. Um, I just owned various businesses across the country. And everywhere I was, I wanted to make a positive impact in my local communities. So Inani means value, and we aim to add value to local communities and to grow a more equal economy for the country. So we started out just over 20 years ago, you know, as a char charitable course, um, giving the proverbial fish. And then we saw that, you know, there's a skill shortage. So we started to train individuals how to catch fish. And then we started to supply the fishing rods, if you will, to equip the individuals. And then we just saw, you know, that uh, we, we required to create more jobs to stimulate the economy in the country. So we're proverbially putting up the fish factories now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, so how does it work in relation to what does it mean? Who gets involved? What, yeah, what is the project actually? Thank you. So in our need to a employed organization, we are referred to as an outsource, outsourced socioeconomic transformation solution. So in our need bridges between the public and the private sector through public private partnerships, which basically means that we uh, generate funds from government as well as the private sector in order to create jobs and stimulate the economy. We are known that we are a bridge mending the broken trust relationship between the private and the public sector and to source and facilitate funds and services required to create businesses and create more jobs. So where does FASA, how's FASA, what's that initiative? What is the joint project between FASA and Inani? That's a very good question. Um, I think for 11 years, FASA has been struggling to build this bridge with governments for training as well as for facilitating funds to set up businesses, both parts. And Inani, as an incubator accelerator, consists of two incubators. We have got a talent incubator, which we refer to as our strategic business unit one, which Ornika is the manager of. And then we've got a business incubator, which is our SBU2, Strategic Business Unit 2. So I was originally introduced, we, as I said, we represent quite a few employer associations, but I was introduced to FASA about five or six years ago uh, at, uh, with Vera Velasquez, our previous executive director for FASA. And then I, um, since then, we've, we've literally grown to represent FASA on, on basically all the formal platforms. Um, where we champion to build a bridge. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to ask this question to Ornika. Ornika, thank you for joining us. So when uh, uh, Nico said you involved the training, uh, setting up the training, getting the candidates, can you elaborate on that? How does it work? Who's it for? Who should apply? 
Okay, thank you. So the talent incubator is really looking at the development part of an individual. Uh, many of the people that we, we, we want to, to really assist do not have any technical qualifications. I can give an example of a young person coming from a special school. Uh, they, they do not have uh, additional qualifications to be able to go into a workplace. So we, when we say incubation, we really start from developing a person from a point of providing them with life skills and, and work readiness program, then aligning them to a particular qualification based on interest. The qualifications will be um, CETA accredited, you know, the sector education and training authorities. And they are in various levels. We normally work with um, programs that are starting from level two to level four. And in all industries, and then um, by the nature of those qualifications, uh, the young person will be working in a workplace. And that's where uh, FASA would come in because of the employment part of this uh, young person. So when you look at uh, learnership, uh, it has an element of you, 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 you do three months of uh, theory classes. And that's where the organization that I also work uh, for African Global Skills Academy, for example, would provide that technical skills for three months. Then in the nine uh, months that uh, the young person should be working, that's where we are linking them with the various employers within FASA and to, to get that technical skills. Now, the thing about our talent incubator is that we, we lobby the employers before, and that's what Nico is saying, the partnership works in saying that we are not training for the sake of training. When we are lobbying the employer, the learners opportunities for an employment after uh, uh, the, the programs are higher because we're looking at employers who are uh, growing, you know, they are opening other stores and so on. So we try to make sure that there is an exit opportunity for that young person to get employment. Uh, the programs are quite great technical but we also provide for those with an entrepreneurial uh, flair. There are programs that are called new venture creation where they are looking into a, a small business to start up in. And those that have the skills to be managers, we would provide programs like generic management that would allow them to get a supervisory or, or management uh, programs. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we call it incubation because sometimes it happens over a period of years. You know, you get a person from here, you put them over a 12 month period of a learnership. After you finish that, you realize that they have some management skills. You then put them on another program and then until you, you exit them. So that is really the role that I am involved in. It involves a lot of negotiations. We have to write a lot of proposals to CITAS or government departments to be able to find the necessary grants for the training part. Uh, the training uh, grant normally comes with what we call a stipend. So the stipend would then be a wage that the learner would be paid during that time. And because of that, it has quite other benefits that I think Tony would also uh, elaborate on those benefits like what we call the 12 ages. An employer who takes up this learner can claim certain uh, tax incentive benefits that assist them to offset it against their profits. So th that is what we, we, we then go around exploring with FASA members in order to be able for them to take up these young people. Can I ask you, um, so can anyone apply? Do they apply through your, through the Nani incubator? How does the application, is it open for everybody or is it someone within an existing business? Okay, so in terms of the talent incubator, there are two, there are two processes. There's the young person who would then want to be part of the program. So that application process is different for a person who wants to be part of a learnership program. And then there is the interest by an employer to, be a, 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 to take up these young people. 
So that is also a different application. So they would, we would then discuss with them the, the potential for hosting the learners. It can be on two phases. It can be that you will just host learners that we've already found the funding for, or we can negotiate with you to say, there are potential uh, funds or grants that are available. Can we apply for you as an employer so that the funding is really directed to you as an employer? Uh, and, and then if, if that is the case, the funding will then be paid to this particular employer as well. And then we will work with the employer to do the training. So there are two different ways in which uh, they might want to be interested to participate in the program. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds very interesting. Uh, so over to Tony, thank you for joining us today. So Onika was mentioning that you handle the tax, the VE, the benefits. Can you give us a little bit of information regarding all, or how that works? Yeah, so I just want to uh, put the uh, my conversation into a context. So let's just say you yourself are a franchisee. You are running a franchise operation in some town somewhere and um, you have to relate to the franchisor. So the franchisor also has certain uh, requirements in terms of who they appoint as the franchisee. So obviously in the transformational agenda, a large amount of franchisees are going to be given to black as defined people. So Inani can train those people who come from those communities to apply to be the franchisee through their training initiatives. So that's the, I want to be in the business, I want to own a franchise, and therefore Inani will train the person to own it and run it. But that person who owns and runs it and can do it successfully because they've gone through the Inani program needs to employ staff. Let's just say there are no staff trained in Lepalali, let's just pretend it's there. Those young people that Anika is now talking about also can go through the Inani training to become a, a what do you call a coffee maker? Uh, a baristo or a toaster or a, or a waiter or a person at the till or a supervisor in that franchisee. So there's a lot of elements to the Inani offering. They can develop people that our society requires in order for them to apply to be franchisee operators and Inani can develop the people that work in those franchised operations across all sorts of franchise operations. It can be food, it can be uh, mechanical work workshops, it could be clinics, everything that requires a franchise operation, those people the franchisors and the franchisees normally belong to FASA, French Franchise Association of South Africa, and that is the link, that is the pool of, of people and resources that would require Inani's value proposition. Now, in doing that, um, that franchisor, that franchisee operation may require a BEE certificate to respond to a, a, a tender application. Let's just say in Lepalali, there's going to be the World Cup soccer stadium uh, operation going in there. And that franchisee wants to uh, respond to a tender from, from the local municipality that says, I want your B certificate. I want to know that you're more than 51% black owned. And I want to know that you can supply um, you know, clinic operations for the sports event or food operations or, or mechanical operations, anything in terms of the franchisee world. So the BE certificate then, Inani can help them as well. They can say, what is a BE certificate that has the level of ownership that you need in order to respond to, to a request for a proposal or to respond to, uh, um, to, to, to the municipality for, for the services that they require. And below uh, the ownership levels would be, and prove to us the municipality is asking you to respond to a, a, a quote or a request for information or, or a, a request for um, services. They can prove that they, that they also are doing 
training of their staff and that their staff are trained through accredited programs, hence Arnica again. And for doing all those various things on the Triple B certificate, of which most people know it's ownership, it's skills development, it's supplier development, it's socioeconomic development, it's employment equity, etc. In most of those elements where there's a financial tag, comes a tax incentive. So what our government has done, they've said, if you do ownership in a certain manner, there's a tax incentive called 12J. If you do skilling in a certain manner, there's a tax incentive called 12H. If you do socioeconomic development, there's a tax incentive called 18A, etc. And that is what Inani can, can take the whole bouquet of, of offerings that a franchisee would, 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 would need help with in, in becoming sustainable and grow. Maybe that franchise operator could also apply to be a franchisee in the, in the next local town and maybe want to open up another franchise in Polokwane, for instance. Now he's sustainable, he's got staff coming through that are trained and accredited programs. The franchisee himself has got a triple B certificate that's appropriate to the transformational agenda. All those things Inani helps in terms of the bouquet of, of information and assets and, and, and assistance that that franchisee who's part of the need of the transformation agenda requires in order to become sustainable. So yes, this helps job creation, but more importantly, it's enrichment. People who are owners, are about enrichment. You don't go into business because you want to create jobs. You go into business, even the gogo on the pavement who's selling oranges does not do it to create a job. She does it to create a profit so that she can go home and feed her family. That is why people are in business. And Inani fundamentally understands it. And that's the value proposition that Inani offers faster. I don't know if that helps. That helps a great deal. Gosh, this is quite an exciting program if you think about it. I mean, you're actually better be training, uh, helping franchisors really to train up franchisees for the future. Um, and then you yep. can help people to be able to grow and implement their staff. And I'm taking it, I'm also taking that you're going to be assisting with the application process. That's where Ornica comes in, you know, where people can come and apply to the Inani Incubator Program uh, and make an application with her and then she'll see whether... Uh, someone where someone would fit perfectly within, say, a franchise that is willing to to come on board and 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 grow this process with you guys. Um, that sounds really exciting. I'm loving the sound of that. Uh, any other thing you'd like to add further to just before we close this session? Um, anything you'd like to add further? Yeah, it would be great. Um, just to mention or to conclude with this, it's a, we are a complete outsourced solution. You know, we really, um, if you take into account government is in business to give out money, you know, they have to achieve targets, whereas the private sector business is in business to make money. Mm. Um, there's a big, you know, mindset adjustment required then that to, to, to be able to create that bridge to let the funds as well as the, the, the services required to distribute that funds according to the targets and the private sector business achievements. It's, it's quite a thing. And to be able to do it for the franchise industry, you know, that pre-corona used to, you know, represent at least 15% of our GDP. Um, I think the one last thing just worth mentioning is that in not being a non-profit company, the directorship and the structure differs from a for-profit company. So what that means is in a for-profit company, your beneficiary is your directors. You know, if there's any dividends, any any money to be made, it gets paid towards the, the directors. Whereas in a, a not-for-profit company, um, it's all about your beneficiaries. And within the last five to six years, we've grown and developed a um, very good relationship with the basic education department, specifically for inclusive education. Um, and because of more than a certain percentage of Inani's beneficiaries goes towards differently abled, we have achieved designated status. Um, and I think perhaps Tony can just quickly tell us what that is, because that's like in his space. So 
You're muted, Tony. You're muted, Tony. Unmute. I've just ran out of power. Uh, we had a, a power failure, so I just had to go to the distribution board and put power on again. All right, let me just check the power. Yes, we're back on power. Okay. Ask that question again, please. Uh, just the designated status, what that entails, please. Oh, so the designated group would be any group that is from youth, rural, disabled, or military vet. And why we're we talking about that is that that particular status in the ownership structure of a franchise operation or the service provider like Inani uh, offers a designated group status, which gives points to a person who procures from Inani. So if you're procuring from Inani for its services on your triple B scorecard under the procurement element, you get points under exempt micro enterprise or QSE. You get points for, for, for procuring from a, a company or an enterprise that's more than 51% black owned. You get points from Inani because they're more than 30% female owned. And you get further points because they're also in the ownership structure uh, and, the, and the way it's formulated have the designated group in that proposition. So if you are wanting to get points in the, in the triple B scorecard for procurement, Inani offers the foremost and best value at this stage. Thank you for sharing that, Tony. Um, yeah. Wow, I feel like I need to come and do a course just to understand what the point systems are all about. We need to, and we offer a course. I do. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yes. So, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody who is watching this and to remind everybody that if you know somebody who's interested in franchising and franchise opportunities or who's interested in upskilling themselves into their development, uh, please get in touch with FASA or with Inani. We have some great opportunities happening along those lines. And please to like and share this with anybody who is interested or who you know would be interested in such opportunities and once again in closing just to remind you that FASA is a non-profit organization that protects lobbies and promotes and develops ethical franchising across all sectors in South Africa with a specific focus on transformation. FASA offers membership to both existing franchisors and franchisees who supports and runs ethical businesses. If you want to know more about what FASA does you can visit them at www www.fasa.co.za and should you wish to get hold of Inani and the incubator program we will be posting a link in the comment box below where you can get hold of Inani so thank you everybody for watching and have a super week further whatever it is you're doing goodbye everyone and thank you to Ornica uh, for joining us today and to Tony and to Nico for their time in sharing us about the Inana nonprofit incubator accelerator program